Heavy gunfire has been reported in cities in Sudan. The US ambassador to Sudan, John Godfrey, says that he and his staff are sheltering in the embassy after those clashes broke out. The UK embassy uh, has also urged British nationals to stay indoors. Uh, well, joining us now is our Africa correspondent, Yusra Elbagir. Uh, Yusra, uh, good to see you. Um, it's been a precarious situation in Sudan anyway of recent times. Just explain to us how things are looking today. I mean, it's been a very intense day in the capital, but also across the country. Fighting broke out in the morning. Gunfire was heard across Khartoum by residents who weren't able to leave their homes. And that continued and sort of spiraled throughout the day. At the moment, there's ongoing fighting at the airport where forces are trying to seize control. And there's also ongoing fighting around the presidential palace. Now, these are key sites. And whichever force manages to take over these sites, they will essentially have political power over the country when you look at the presidential palace, but also the airport which is currently unable to operate. People aren't able to come in and out. So there is a halt in sort of the day-to-day -day operations in the country at the moment. And just to talk a little bit about the two sides that are fighting, you've got the Sudanese armed forces, um, which are essentially governing the country in the post-revolution period after long-time military dictator Ahmed al-Bashir was ousted. And you've got the paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces, the RSF, that came into power after the conflict in Darfur. It's a medley of tribal militias that have been accused of committing atrocities in Darfur and were deeply empowered by Bashir's government as he tried to crush the rebellion there over the last two decades. Now, these forces have essentially come into power, shared power since the revolution. They consolidated their power during a pact in uh, 2021 during a coup and they but tensions have been building behind the scenes especially over the last few days where the army has co come out and called the rapid support forces movement a clear violation of law not in coordination with the army and essentially moving in its own interests people are, are really scared there's a low flying military aircraft gunfire is continuing they're seeing anti aircraft uh, uh, artillery on the streets and they're asking why the international community hasn't come in. These are, these are powers, the US, the UK, Europe, who have been mediation powers during the post-revolution transition period. And they're asking why they haven't come in to sort of intervene and quell what could become a civil war. This is what the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, had to say. The major parties in, uh, in Khartoum some weeks ago reached a very important um, framework agreement on how to proceed with a uh, transition to civilian government. And there's been real progress in trying to move that forward. It's a, it's a fragile situation. There are other actors that may be pushing against that, that progress. But uh, this is a real opportunity to finally carry forward the um, civilian-led transition, and one that we and, and other countries are trying to, uh, to bolster. I mean, it's important to note that both sides of this of these clashes have been accused of committing atrocities against un unarmed pro-democracy protesters in the last few years, and now they're fighting. So civilians are are deeply scared and uncertain about what could happen if there isn't a very efficient and effective intervention. You, sir, while we've got you, um, some fairly dramatic footage appearing on social media showing planes uh, at some of the main airports in Sudan on fire reports, um, unconfirmed reports of civilians being injured uh, in those explosions as well. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been hearing of civilians pouring into hospitals, reports of injuries, of casualties. We're unclear of how many people have been hurt. We'll know probably towards the end of the day. But this is, this is widespread and it is deeply, deeply worrying, deeply concerning. All right, Yusra, thank you.